So it's Wednesday night and my husband and I just finished up on our planter box. It's my herb boxes and I'm so excited. I, I've been thinking about these ever since I started growing the herbs, which was like 12 weeks ago when I started the first ones. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys that today. And then also tomorrow I am basically doing a complete makeover on this outdoor like patio space. My grandma, this is where she had her pond and she always had this really cute like sitting area. And honestly, it just, it just needs a little spring refresh. So let me show you guys the herb planter boxes and I have a specific project in mind for them. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Cricut and I'm gonna be using my Cricut maker to make little like custom signs for each level of the herb box. So up here I've got my sage, also a few little pansies that I grew from seed. I'm really, really proud of them. Um, and then I've got my oregano, I've got my thyme. I just transplanted these guys in here about a couple hours ago. So they are going, they're probably gonna go through a little bit of transplant shock. But I have these little chalkboard labels, which I'll show you them in a minute. And I wanna cut out like white, um, you know, white labels for what each level represents. So like this one's basil, got some little bitty, bitty baby basils. And then I put in some other flowers too, like this is bacopa and it'll like trail out the sides. Or I've got these petunias. These I also started from seed. Actually, we saved the seeds from my mom's uh, hanging baskets last year. And it's really cool. We've got all these white, white petunias. I also have in mind for the little sitting area right over here by the pond, I wanna be able to like, you know, make it inviting, like to go have coffee in the morning and just have a little like, a little tray, maybe some candles. I went to Craft Warehouse, it's like the local craft store here, and I picked out a few things and I thought I would just show you guys what I picked up and what I'm planning kinda to use and we'll do the big cleanup and we'll execute it all tomorrow. So, okay, let's do first my little signs. So I got these from Amazon actually, and they work perfect, not only for like a farmer's market booth, but I thought they would be really cute with the white vinyl and just cutting out, you know, the names of the herbs. And I've got a bunch of them in here. They're pretty inexpensive. And then from the craft store, I found this tray. I thought this might be cute with like some candles on it, or, you know, if you're doing your coffee, you could bring like, I don't know, sugar and cream or something out. I also found this really cool wreath. This was on sale for 10 bucks. So I don't know if I'm gonna use it out here or maybe I'm gonna put it in my chicken coop. I don't know, but I thought it was really cool with the pussy willow and it's got like a little bit of greenery. I thought it could be really cute. I saw these wooden beads. It's like a little garland. I thought this might be nice either draped on the table or maybe in the tray. And then this, probably won't use it here, but I thought I would mention it. I'm gonna put this by my beehive because be kind, it's got a bee. I found two pots. I don't know if I'm gonna use these for my bouquet bar at the market or if I'm gonna use maybe one of them on the table because I thought it would be fun to do just, you know, just for the day, like a little fresh bouquet, some things that I can pull out of the farm, put on the table and then like, you know, surprise the kids with it. And then last but not least, this little like concrete or like cement bird. Isn't that cute? My grandma always had things like this around. You can still find little bits like across the way. I'll show you guys, but there's a little rabbit over here. And this totally reminded me of her. I just thought this on the table, it's just, Something sweet, reminds me of my grandma. Here it is, so this is on the opposite end of the pond, so this is where the chairs are, and then this is a little bunny figure that my grandma always had just around the pond, and she would always move things around by the seasons, so I thought that little bird just so fitting for this space. Oh, I didn't even realize there's also a frog over here, I'm just so used to seeing it. This guy over here, normally the waterfall is running, I think the breaker just tripped, but she always had stuff like this around, and I, as a kid, I always loved it. So that's just a little preview of what we're gonna do tomorrow. For now though, I've gotta get the kids some dinner, and then I'll see you, see you bright and early. Good morning, guys. So it's the next day, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but we have two different excavators out that are digging the hole for the new house, and it's pretty loud. <laughs> so I'm gonna get started on our projects for the outdoor space, but we're probably gonna be doing some voiceovers today because it's loud. I'm gonna take you out there so you can see like what exactly we're doing. It's a huge dig, and also look how well my little bouquet is lasting. Like, yeah, okay, it's almost a week old. I made this from flowers from last market, but 
I love this little like jam jar vase thing. It's so fun to just pop little bits and pieces in. Some lupin, some uh, wild anemones. It's hanging in there pretty good. Okay, let me go show you what's making all the noise out here. things are happening lots of progress isn't that crazy there's so much going on outside right now just at any time like between the kids playing and that it's a lot <laughs> um, so I want to get started with our little outdoor space I want to get this all done today because I just want to like surprise everybody with this cool little area that I've created I did get a couple plants too like some things that were already growing a bit and um, you know just to make like an instant impact so I've got two pillow sham blanks um, these are from Cricut and I got the 18 inch and I just got some little inserts that you can put inside These though, I I saw a design that I really really loved the thing is they have like it's got some flowers on it which Of course, I like it um, But then it has like their last name But the thing is it's my parents up here and me and my husband so we have different last names so I thought I'm just gonna customize that and make it say something like live laugh love or something like that i'm going to customize it in the design space and then we're going to go ahead and use the easy press and then that'll infuse the ink into the pillow sham i think we'll start there all right so i'm just going to go ahead and search by all categories and i know it was a family like a family pillow and it had flowers on it so i know i'm going to need to customize it oh there it is the johnson family so we'll just go to customize and then i think i want it to say oh I don't want it to be too cliche, but I want it to be like cutesy at the same time. Breathe. Maybe pause. Breathe. Rest. I just came up with that on the spot. <laughs> I don't know, is that weird? I wanna do my best to center this. I think they need just a little bit more space in between. I like that. I feel like sometimes we tend to be just too much like go, go, go. And it's good to like this whole space. That's my idea. It's just to be more intentional to slow down and like smell the roses, but in like a less cliche way. Okay, let's go ahead and select everything and then we're going to weld it together. And that way everything is going to need, like, it'll show the machine that it needs to be where I'm putting it. Perfect. Make it. I always make sure and do the mirror when I'm doing any kind of transfer. Continue. And then I've got our transfer paper already on the standard grip mat. Infusible ink sheet. Let's go ahead and put it into the Cricut and it'll do its thing. Beautiful. While it's doing the cut, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my easy press. I have the Cricut Easy Press 2. I will link this one down below. They've got multiple sizes. I feel like this one's really versatile. And then I've also got the mat, so it's like a heat proof mat, so you can do it wherever you need to. Oh, it's so cool. It'll look even cooler once we weed it out. Cute. So one thing with these sheets, if you kind of like roll them, it makes it a lot easier to weed these little pieces out. So if you can just kind of like, kind of like roll it a little bit it's easier and then I'm just gonna use my weeder tool and just pull away the excess the things that we basically don't want it to transfer we're just gonna pull those off so it's kind of like you're working with negatives and you got to pull that out and then once you've got the bulk of it off then you're just gonna take your weeder tool and get out like the little bits like sort of you know on the B there's a couple bubbles here that still have the the negative in there so you just use your weeder and then just flick them out. So I've got my design all weeded out. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and trim 
just kind of around the edges here. And then we're gonna wanna prep, oop, it's all heated up now, perfect. We're gonna wanna prep our um, pillow sham. So I'm just gonna open this up and we'll put just a sheet of paper in between. And then we'll go ahead and just prep the, the pillow, get out any wrinkles. Okay, so we're nice and flat and lint rollered. And now it's time to put on the design. So I'm just gonna make sure this is nice and centered where I want it. Beautiful, got the butcher paper. We are at 195 Celsius and we're gonna press for 60 seconds. I'm actually gonna do this in two different, two different goes because I just wanna make sure that it's, I wanna make sure it's right. And we're doing light pressure. Oh, gotta hit the button <laughs> and it'll start to count down. Okay, and then we'll do this side of it. Okay, and the second side, 60 seconds. I can see it turned out really good. <laughs> now for this one, we're actually gonna take this off while it's still warm. <gasps> okay, you guys see this. It's the big reveal. This is the fun part. <gasps> cool, oh, I love it. Got a little piece of lint right here, but. <gasps> Pause, breathe, rest. I love it. Go ahead and take out that paper. So cute, right? I probably should go ahead and just iron out these little corners where I didn't um, flatten it for the design so it's nice and straight. So cute, right? Oof, this is dirty. Sitting out all winter. Okay, table is clean, and now we're gonna decorate it, make it cute, and get some flowers planted. flowers go I went ahead and I picked up both Cosmos and this is called Speedwell I'm not real familiar with this it looks kind of like a Veronica almost like a salvia but it's supposed to be a perennial in my area good till um, it'll perennialize to zone six so I thought this would be cute I love this pink color too just thought that would be really pretty with the white I do already have Cosmos growing in my garden but none that's like actually big and blooming right now I don't know if the deer are gonna find this spot. I don't think they'll come all the way over here by the pond, but if they do, they'll probably munch on the cosmos. But I thought it's something that even if they do munch on it and they eat a bunch of blooms, it'll keep coming back and bringing more and more blooms. So this will be fun just to cut on, just like the herbs. I love things that you can just cut and it grows back. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of plant these sporadically just around the pond here and then give them some water and then we'll make a little bouquet for the table. little fire pit that the kids they used to like to use this to like roast marshmallows and it's not too far away from the herb planter and kind of like the sitting area so I feel like I'm just gonna put some little logs in here and make it look cute and then we can actually use this like in the evenings do some s'mores let's see let's go with some of these smaller guys under here I think during the winter you know we all get into the like a certain routine and then as soon as the sun starts popping out like once spring is like 
fully warming up it's like the outdoor space like all of a sudden your living room becomes huge and you want to start using all these outdoor spaces again so it's it's just a really good time to like freshen everything up and like really make it usable again i think i've got more than plenty here There we go, they'll get the idea. Next up, we're gonna do our signs for the cute little herb planter boxes. And I'm gonna be using the permanent vinyl for this. I don't have the box, I'll link it down below so you guys can see which one I'm using. Um, I love the white, cause it just looks like you wrote it in like chalk, and especially if you're doing it on something like this, which looks just like a chalkboard, it's super cute. I've used these at our farmer's market booth as well. So I'm just gonna go into the design space. I'm gonna go ahead and just make some text and we're gonna do about, probably about a half inch in height, maybe 0.75 of the different herb labels and get those printed out. Now you guys have seen me do a basic cut, peel it off and then apply it to something different in some past videos, but that's all I'm doing for these little chalkboard labels. I just typed out the names. This is this is exactly how I did my um, my spice cabinet redo. I'll go ahead and link that one for you guys down below and up in the cards. That way you can see it if you haven't already. But same exact process here. And there we go. So we've got sage. I already did basil, thyme, and oregano. Let's go ahead and put these out on the herb boxes. It's just the cutest little thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead. Let's see. So we've got four different levels. I almost said three. I kind of want to do like one up here and then stagger it down or should I do them all like in the middle like or I think I should do them in the middle I didn't think about that until just now I think I'm just gonna stagger them so like level up here it'll be there and then go down and then it'll just kind of be like climbing down but not like perfectly centered or anything so first one going in I like kind of popped up like that so you can read it Okay, let's get all these in here and then we'll do like a final reveal. Okay, what do you guys think? So we've got sage, oregano, thyme, and basil. And I like how they just kind of like trickle down. But then we've also got the flowers in there. Give you guys maybe a better close up. Sage, I love for anything like pork is so good with sage. And it also goes really well in the herb butter. Like if I just pull off a few leaves and the nice thing is too, with your herbs, the more you pull from them, the more they keep putting out. So these guys I've been just like pinching on <laughs> regularly. And if you look, you can see all these new little baby sprouts. So because I've pinched on them, you know, taken off some of these larger leaves, pinch that off, and then it sends more energy into creating the new babies. And same thing with the oregano. Um, the more that you pinch on it, the more it will come out. So these guys here, if I were to pinch these leaves, then these baby leaves would just get like bigger and then it would maybe even like send out, you know, cross, cross shoots. Down here we've got our thyme. These guys you can really just clip off if you can find a branch and then you can see where it splits into, so it's got the center one, that's usually what I pull out and you've got the sides there's so much you can do with herbs. All of these are what I use in my herb butter. Basil, I usually save and I'll do like mozzarella, tomato, and I'll put that on like a, you know, like on a toast or a little, um, like a little baguette. Well, this guy got dirty. Hmm. A casualty of watering. I think the funny thing about the herb box is like, I know what these herbs are. Like I've grown them from seed. I literally know the ins and outs about each of the plants, but having those labels, it just adds like the cuteness factor you wouldn't get if it was just like plants and dirt. It just adds something like special. Same thing with the flowers, having little, little baby flowers in there and things that are gonna trickle out over the next few weeks. It just makes it really cute. So funny, we've got a crazy amount of tadpoles right now and they're all coming up to eat the fish food. <laughs> I remember coming up here as a kid and just seeing all the tadpoles and just like loving it, catching them and you know, keeping them, raising them, turning into frogs, so fun. Well, I think we've done it. This is like the perfect spot to come calm down, get inspired and like have your morning coffee, listen to the birds chirping, but it's missing one thing and that's a fresh bouquet for the table. So let's go pick some flowers and then the space will be complete. So I've got a few different options for a vase. I'm kind of leaning towards just this little 
And just this little bud vase. There's something about them. They're just like, they're just adorable. So I think let's do the bud vase. I have a little bit of hemlock, a few itty bitty <laughs> baby peonies. This one's just starting to open up and these guys are uh, tiny, like tiny side buds. I picked them when they were just like tighter than this. Ooh, I love that. I love that and it adds like a nice little pop. I've also got a lupin, this nice tall purple. There you go. And then I've got these little anemones. I think let's just do one kind of popping out the bottom and I grabbed a little bit of thyme because why not okay what do you think add a nice pop of color for the table I think so I'm so in love with how this turned out just a few little things like I didn't have to go out and buy anything like crazy fancy but just you know adding a few candles that you've already got it and a tray just something fun like a couple of new things with some things that you already have and things that you're growing creating something of your own it really does just like freshen up and add some life to a space well guys, I hope you're all having a great day. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll put all the materials that I use for my Cricut projects down below. And if you'd like to check out more about our flower farm, some of my farmer's market videos, then I will have those linked below. And I hope to see you back soon. Bye guys.